Let me say, first of all, on behalf of my daughters, Caroline and Catherine, thank you to Tim Phillips for defending our right to roast marshmallows. We all knew the threats we were facing were big, but who knew they were that big? I got to tell you, Caroline, our six-year-old, her approach to roasting marshmallows, she says, Daddy, stick it in the fire, light it on fire. That's kind of the AFP approach. We don't do anything halfway. You know, I spent much of last week, last month, rather, back in Washington, D.C. So it is great to be back in America. <laughs> now, I'm sorry to tell y'all that by virtue of your being here today, on Monday morning, each of you is going to be audited by the IRS. You're right, they don't work on Monday on Labor Day. <laughs> or for that matter, any other day of the year. <laughs> so thank you for the courage of your convictions. You know, back in Washington, there's a diet that is now very, very popular. It's called the Obama diet. Works very, very well. You simply let Putin eat your lunch every day. And it is sad just how true that is. <laughs> Listen, I'm here today more than anything else to tell each and every one of you, thank you. Thank you for your leadership. Because of your leadership, because of your passion, America is waking up and America is turning around. We are winning victory after victory after victory on the national scale, whether it's fighting back efforts to restrict guns, whether it's on immigration, whether it's standing for religious liberty. Americans are waking up to get back to the principles we were founded on. And AFP is front and center leading that fight. We are 66 days out from the November elections. 66 days from now, just over 1,500 hours, we're going to retake the United States Senate and we're going to retire Harry Reid. So I'm here to say thank you, but this summit is also a call to action. This summit is a call to action. Every man, woman, and child who is here, we have 66 days and we got a job to do. I'm going to tell you four key issues that are going to be front and center between now and Election Day. Number one, no amnesty. President Obama has made a decision to make this election in 2014 a national referendum on amnesty. If you support amnesty, vote Democrat. If you oppose amnesty, throw Harry Reid out. You know, in the state of Texas, border security is not some abstract theory to us. It is something we live with each and every day. It's one of the things I enjoy sitting on the Senate Judiciary Committee, listening to senators like Chuck Schumer and Dick Durbin lecture John Cornyn and me on border security. Now, I understand that Manhattan is very concerned with their security with the Bronx. 
but it's a little bit different on 2,000 miles of the Rio Grande. You know, the president is right about one thing that's happening on the border right now. It is a humanitarian crisis, but it is a crisis of his own creation. It is the direct consequence of President Obama's lawlessness. A few months ago, President Obama came to the state of Texas. He had time to come to a couple of Democratic Party fundraisers to swill some Chardonnay with fat cats in the Democratic Party. And he didn't have a minute to head down to the border and see the crisis that he has caused. You know, I got to tell you, we tried to help him out. We actually tweeted to the president a map quest of driving from here to the border. <laughs> that didn't work. So I've got a different plan. Tonight, I am officially extending an invitation to President Barack Obama to come join me at the border in Texas. And I figured out the only way there is a chance in heaven he might come. I'm inviting him to come to a golf course. And there actually is, if you go to Big Bend, there's a wonderful resort called Lajitas with a golf course right on the border. In fact, the 11th hole is pretty amazing. The 11th hole, the pin is on the other side of the Rio Grande. And so you can only go for a hole in one because you can't cross the river and putt. So I'm expecting to get a call back from the president any day now accepting this invitation. You want to understand what's happening in the border, a simple example of the numbers illustrates everything. Three years ago, there were roughly 6,000 unaccompanied children trying to enter this country illegally in 2011. Then in 2012, the president illegally granted amnesty to some 800,000 people who had entered as kids. Now, the foreseeable result of that, the predicted result of that, if you grant amnesty to people who come as kids, it creates a huge incentive for more and more and more children to come. And so we saw the numbers grow from 6,000 just three years ago to 90,000 this year. And next year, it's expected to be 145,000. These are little boys and little girls that are being physically assaulted, that are being sexually assaulted. And I'm proud to tell you we have seen some leadership in Washington. The House of Representatives has stood up and led. I introduced two pieces of legislation. One, to make absolutely clear in law that the President of the United States has no authority prospectively to grant amnesty to anyone here illegally. And number two, legislation providing that the federal government will reimburse the states for calling up the National Guard like our Governor Rick Perry has done. <laughs> 